Hi, my name is Ada, and welcome to Flagship One Incorporated, where we specialize in automotive hardware and software solutions. Today, we're going to be covering four steps to help you diagnose your engine computer as to whether or not it is the issue in your vehicle. The steps that we're going to be covering are visual inspection, a simple swap, using a tool such as a scanner, and process of elimination. When doing a visual inspection, you want to start out by inspecting the pins. You want to make sure that they're all upright and intact. If that checks out, you then want to move on to a smell test. A simple whiff by the plug of the unit will let you know whether the unit is all right. You get a distinct odor of burnt plastic, that lets you know that that's not okay. At that point, you want to further inspect the board by opening up the unit. When opening up the unit, you want to visually inspect for any burnt components or corrosion. If either one of the two are found, the engine computer needs to be replaced. For step two, a simple swap can be done. This would only be effective when working on an older vehicle, particularly OBD1s where the engine computers do not require programming. At that point, if you can find a replacement unit matching your exact original part number when putting that replacement into your vehicle if you can communicate with that module that's a very big hint letting you know that the unit needed to be replaced for step three of your diagnostic you can use a tool such as a scanner hooking up a scanner to your obd port will let you know whether or not there are any codes coming from the engine computer once you have diagnostic trouble codes, you'll be able to know whether the root of the problem was the engine computer or if the computer is communicating that something else in the engine is going on. For step four of diagnosing your engine computer, we're going to be covering process of elimination. When diagnosing your engine computer by process of elimination, we're going to be focusing on two halves, the inputs versus the outputs. The inputs consist of your battery, the ignition switch, the fuses and the sensors. The outputs consist of the fuel injector, the fuel pump, spark plugs, and starter. With the inputs, we have to trace that through to make sure that enough power is getting to the engine computer. You start out with the battery. Is there enough voltage coming out? And then trace that voltage through the ignition switch, through the fuses, and through the sensors. If the proper voltage is getting to the engine computer, then we have to inspect the other half to see if the computer is doing its job. You want to confirm whether the injectors are all getting signals. You want to confirm whether the fuel pump is getting a signal, whether you have spark, and whether or not the starter is getting a signal. If you have the proper voltage traced from the battery all the way through the engine computer, your inputs are fine. But if you then go to the other half and either the injectors, the fuel pump, the spark or the starter are not working, that's going to let you know that the computer is receiving enough power to do its job, but something in the middle within the computer is not translating, therefore the computer is not doing its job. At that point, you are able to confirm that the engine computer is the trouble. If you do not have enough voltage going to the computer, you want to go back and further inspect battery, your wiring to the ignition switch, your fuses, and your sensors. If these four steps have not helped you diagnose a computer properly, at that point, you can visit our website at fs1inc.com for us to best help you diagnose this unit.